Uh, quite a bit of debate. Uh, please take your time and uh, we'll go ahead and take a vote on this. Thank you, Mr. President and members. Let me begin with the issue of process, Mr. President. And let me point out what a first-rate ra first process this has been, continues to be, and why it ought to be a model for future debates on future subjects of this import. Senator Padilla, as chair of his committee, convened a five-hour and 15-minute hearing on a bill that had already been in print for some period of time and welcomed more than 30 witnesses to speak without limitation on their time to ensure that we fleshed out the debate, that it was vigorous, that it was robust, and that every point of view got heard. Members, when was the last time you had a five-hour and 15-minute debate on one of your bills and enjoyed it, by the way? A subsequent hearing, Mr. Chair, that went on for, in my recollection, two, two and a half hours where the committee stepped up and had a vigorous debate between and among the committee members, exactly the kind of robust debate that there ought to be. An hour-long hearing in the Appropriations Committee where the chair and her staff teased out the financial implications and put aside some of the misinformation that we'll get to in just a minute. And perhaps most importantly, Mr. President and members, when was the last time either house of the legislature said, you know what, if we're going to do the public's business, then could we stop sending bills back and forth between the two houses that we think are the picture of perfection and then being surprised when they're met with a little resistance, with a little pushback, with a little shove? Why don't we actually step up this time and say we're going to work on a bicameral basis, we're going to work collaboratively, and we're going to take our work product over to the other house with an acknowledgement that there are some issues we'd actually like their input on as we work in a bipartisan and bicameral way. Let me also suggest that any comparison to the restructuring measure 1890 is wholly inapt. And I say that, members, because with so few of us who were here at that time, I'm guessing that not everyone recalls that that was a bill that was heard and voted on in the final hours at the end of a two-year session. The exact opposite of this process, which says, let's put the bill in print on December the 1st, the first day of a two-year session, Let's have lengthy hearings right now about the content of the bill. Let's amend it four times to respond to the legitimate concerns that we've heard. And then let's take it over to the other house with more than a year and a half to work on those issues. By the way, on top of the two years worth of debate and discussion we had on this bill's predecessor during the previous two-year session. So if ever there was a process that ought to be one we can be proud of, it is this process, and I believe it will produce a better product for the people of the state of California. Which gets us to the question, Mr. President, what is the product? Why are we doing this? Well, as you heard, everybody's going to have their own reason, but I think there are five good reasons we ought to be doing this. We ought to be doing this because it's going to clean up the air. We ought to be doing this because it's going to address climate change. We ought to be doing this, if you didn't care at all about green, we ought to be doing this because we remember what happened to us in 2001, and I look around and see a lot of my classmates who showed up just in time to watch somebody turn their hand on the spigot and leave California high and dry in terms of energy and manipulate the market and push up the prices. Why? Because we had all of our energy eggs in one basket and because we had failed to diversify our energy portfolio in the way that this bill ensures we will do. We ought to be doing this because it's time that our foreign policy was driven by American values and American interests, not by energy concerns. And we ought to be doing this because if we send a clear signal to the market now, if we tell folks with investment dollars, savvy, and expertise that California is real about 33 percent by 2020, then the green jobs and the investment dollars will flow to California, which in my view is the place those dollars ought to be. Members, as I listened to the description of the bill from opponents, I thought, I'm wondering why the bill that's being described has support from the Silicon Valley Leadership Group a business association in my Silicon Valley area that represents more than 250 of the largest employers in the Valley. I wonder why Semper Energy said, we're an investor-owned utility, but we can support the bill now, even though we have outstanding issues on the bill. I wondered why, if people were worried about jobs, they weren't listening to the folks at both AFSCME and the Building Trades Council who said, this is the biggest green jobs bill of the year. And I wondered why the American Lung Association said, we're there for it if it wasn't really going to clean up the air. Those are the purposes, the goals, the results of this bill 
that has thus far been through an exemplary process. Now, you want to talk about cost? Let's cut to the chase. Senator Kehoe's analysis, as she pointed out, was half a cent on a 15 cent base of 20 percent by 2010. That's a three and a third percent increase for all of the things that I've just described. But even so, I would be among the first to say, you know what, we have to be mindful of the cost. So you have to ask yourselves, is that 3 percent a number that should concern us? And I would say, not if you believe, as I do, that the technology can only improve and the price of that technology go down over the next 10 years. Not if you believe, as I do, that there's going to be an increased cost, as Senator Pavley referenced, to the cost of fossil fuels with the current gubernatorial administration and the current national administration. Not if you believe, as I do, that fossil fuels, which are by definition finite and limited, over time will respond to the marketplace, and as there are fewer and fewer of those resources available, the price will go up. The cost issue alone should drive us in this direction. And I have the same letter, just so you know that SMUD wasn't playing any favorites, that says I too can get 50 percent of my energy needs met here in California, here in Sacramento, for $3 a month. Six bucks right now, not five or ten years in the future, six bucks a month right now for 100 percent renewables right here in Sacramento. Finally, I just want to say that Every now and again, there's an opportunity for us to step up and show folks in California that this building, the people who represent them, are here to solve real problems that affect their daily lives and that we can do it without the usual drag and delay and bluster and rhetoric and raised voices that they witness too often. Today is such a day, and my hope is that we'll have an I vote from a majority of members making that case to the people of California. I respectfully ask for an I vote.